Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, June the 17th. And boy, the days are going by fast, it seems. Well, we just got news uh, that our flight's been canceled again. Um, it was rescheduled for July 1st, but now they're saying that there are no flights at all coming in July or going out. So we're just going to have to wait and see again. And I'm not surprised. Um, I know that if God wanted us in Canada, he would have opened the door a while ago. But he wants us here for his purpose. And uh, and we're seeing people coming to Christ. We're seeing family members coming to Christ. Family members drawing closer to God than ever, be, than ever before. We're having Bible studies here every day. And, and it's been amazing. And not only that, um, we have the opportunity in helping communities that are really poor that don't get the chance to eat as well as you and I do and and the government um, doesn't really help them too much so so as long as we're here God is using us and uh, praise God for that so um, so God is the one who who knows what he's doing during this time and not only that, I really, really do believe that it's possible that the Lord may come back this year. So he may just even tell us, you know what, just spend time with your family. And uh, don't worry about going back to Canada. And, um, you know, continuing on with your life out there. Just stay with the family out here until I come back for you. It's very possible. Um I believe that the Lord may even come back during the Feast of Trumpets that is that will be here September 18th to the 20th. Because it says in the Bible, it says, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, that's when the Lord takes his bride out of the church. So it's very possible that the Feast of Trumpets, September 18th to the 20th, he may call his church out of this earth. Don't know. But I do know one thing that the Lord says in Revelation chapter 3, verse 3. If you do not keep watch, then you will not know the hour of my coming. And so every day I am watching, saying, Lord, you can come back at any moment. And uh, we need to continue to keep watch. Anyways, God's in control. He will provide for us. We don't have to worry about finances or you know how my rent's going to get paid in Canada even though I'm not there and bills and car payments and who's going to take care of our cat that's God's um, I don't want to say burden because it's not really a burden not, nothing's a burden for him but uh, but that's God's problem issue <laughs> I just have to trust that he will take care of tomorrow he will take care of today and tomorrow. Anyways, we are in Romans chapter 14. So let's get into it. It says, Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not, judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. So in other words, if people want to eat certain foods, or not to eat certain foods because of their faith, then that is up to them. Um, you know, that's how cults start, right? In different denominations. And so, you know, we're going to worship on this day, on a Saturday, and, and, if, and if you don't worship on that day, then you're not you know, real Christians or real believers of God. Or if you eat pork and drink coffee, then you're not truly um, Christians. <laughs> well, the Bible's saying that, th that this is not true, which you'll see as we continue on here. Who art thou that judges another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Ye, he shall be holden up. For God is able to make him stand. 
So masters and servants were like employers and employees today. They weren't like, you know, slaves, like treated terribly, whipped and beaten. I'm sure maybe that took place in some situations, but um, overall, no. It, they were like, like employees, employers of today. And some people had wealth and... So they needed servants and maidservants and, you know, gardeners and cooks and just people looking after, you know, their children or their property. Just like today. It's the same thing. Uh, there, there are wealthy people and, you know, movie stars that have their own personal cooks and homemakers and stuff. So that's what masters and servants were. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doeth not regard it. He that eateth eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth God thanks. So this is a good example of Christians, Christians today who they choose to worship Saturday, and if they want to do that, then that's fine. They can do that. But don't put those restraints on other believers because they choose to worship or go to church on a Sunday. And there are some believers that work on the weekends, and maybe they do their fellowship on Wednesday or Tuesday or any other day during the week. And the Bible is saying let every man or every person choose to worship God pretty much on their own day. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So, we can worship God any day. There is no Sabbath day anymore. Right? The Bible says that um, man was not made for the Sabbath day, but the Sabbath day, which is the Sabbath rest of God was made for man. And that was in the Old Testament, that was under the law. But now, through Jesus Christ, every day is the Sabbath day, is a Sabbath rest. So, those who are in Jesus Christ, we enter his Sabbath rest every day. And if you choose to do church on Tuesday, Wednesday, that's upon you. But please, don't put the restraints on others that they must worship on the same day as well. So that's what the Bible is saying. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. So the bottom line is that we all belong to the Lord. If you are in Jesus Christ, if you're a born-again believer, we all belong to him. We live for him. We die for him. Um, nothing can snatch you from his love. Nothing can separate you from God's love. So it's either you belong to him or you don't. If you don't belong to him, well, then you can live however you want to live because you're already under the judgment of God. That's what the Bible says. But now when you give your life to Christ, you become born again. You live every day for him. And the more that we walk in the spirit and not in the carnal flesh, the more that we're going to know exactly the will of God in our own personal lives. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. But why doest thou judge thy brother? Or why doest thou set a knot thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. <laughs> That's powerful. Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess that he is God. 
Every knee is going, going to bow. Every tongue will confess. If you believe him or not, that's still not going to change God's word. So then, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. So, we are not to judge one another. Of course, if you see someone doing something that's wicked, or it's hurting someone, or a child, or someone like that in the body of Christ, well then that's where you judge them within God's word. Right? You take God's word and, and you show him what he's doing. But this judging is different. Like going like, so why is he drinking wine? I thought he was a Christian. Or why is he worshipping um, on a Tuesday and not on a Saturday? Or, or why is he eating pork? You know, those sort of things. Or, or why is he watching Sunday football? He shouldn't be doing anything on Sunday. Well, the Bible's clear that if you belong to him, you belong to him. Nothing's going to change that. And we are to live unto God according to our own faith with him. So I know and I am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. So he's talking about food now, remember? Jesus said to Peter, gave him that vision of the big blanket coming down upon all animals. He said, kill and eat. Meaning that everything is now clean to eat. Pork, steak, whatever. And that also was referring to now Gentiles who were considered unclean to the Jew. But now we are all um, called unto, according to God. And it's not what we eat what we do is our heart. It's if our hearts belong to Jesus or not. But to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat or thy food, now walkest thou not charitably, destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So the kingdom of God is clearly not about what you eat, what you drink, what you wear, how you wear, or how you dress, um, what day you worship God on, on. No, it's about peace and joy and walking in his will, and walking in love. That's what his kingdom's about. But so many times... <laughs> People live out in their flesh and their carnal mind and then they put these restrictions and oh now you must do this, this, that, this, this, that, and that, and that, and that. And uh, that's what, how cults start. And that's how many different denominations start. And, and it's just, we should really be under one denomination under God. <laughs> and that is walking in His will, walking in the perfect love of Jesus. But anyways... Continue on here. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify one another. For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. Wow. So again, it's just saying that it's not what we eat um, will destroy the work of God. But it's people. Um, people will destroy the work of God by their offense. <laughs> Sorry, I, I my mind was in a deep thought there for a moment, so that's why I had a bit of a brain freeze, but I was thinking about, um, oh, I was just thinking about something. Um, how so many people just get offended nowadays. Uh, and that's what the Word of God says, right, in Matthew 24. 
It says, in the last days, in the last hour, many will be offended. There are so many people that are just offended over nothing. And they waste all their time and energy and their whole life on offense. And that's what destroys the work of God. It's just being offended. You know, it's uh, clearly saying that if you want to drink coffee, you want to eat pork, you want to worship God on Saturday or Sunday, go right ahead. It doesn't matter. You want to drink a bit of wine, it's okay, which we'll see uh, in the next verse. But so many people just get worked up over nothing, and it actually ruins the work of God. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. So what it's saying is that if you invite, let's say, a brother of Christ to your home, and you know that he came from an alcoholic past, a drinking past, and he doesn't drink, then maybe you shouldn't drink. You know, don't bring out the bottle of wine or, or the beer or whatever. Um, it's okay to drink those things, obviously, as long as you don't get, as long as you do not get drunk, because the Bible says to be sober-minded. But it it also doesn't um, change a person's walk with God just because you know you have one beer or a glass of wine. But anyways, this is saying that if it's going to cause your brother to stumble, don't even bring it out. It's just better just to don't bring it out. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubleth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. All right. So basically what that is saying, that people uh, who have a self-righteousness, say, well, I don't eat pork, and I don't do this, and I don't, you know, drink wine because of my relationship with God, and but yet they're condemning everyone else. The Bible says that that's a sin, that you're worse off um, being someone like that. So be careful and be, be wise in not judging others because... Um, because of what they eat or choose to drink. The bottom, bottom line is everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That's it. It's not what you eat that's going to save you. It's not what day you choose to worship is going to save you. It's not even going to church is going to save you. You know, there's many people that go to church and they have a self-righteous heart. And yet, they have no relationship with Jesus. They will not get, get go into heaven. But the Bible is clear. Those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If you believe that Jesus was sent from the Father from heaven to die on the cross for your sins, and God raised him the third day to give you everlasting life, then you will be saved. It's, it's, it's that clear. Now, some may get in to heaven just by fire that's what the bible says because once you become saved your salvation is secure it's locked in a vault in heaven that's it no one can touch it you're saved but now it's the fruit of our salvation that will be produced which will give you the rewards in heaven and the bible says that some of, some of us will get into heaven just by fire and all of our works are going to go through that fire. And some people's works was just all for show. It was all for their money. Like those tele, some televangelists out there. Um, you know, and I'm not going to mention any names because who am I to judge? But there are some uh, that are saved, but they, but they got so caught up in maybe the money and their lifestyle. And they live fancy. And maybe they'll just get into heaven. And all their works will be consumed by the fire of God. And maybe their works were hay and straw. But they'll get in. They may have a few little gems that 
withstood the be a fire? I don't know. And then there's others whose works will be like silver and gold and precious jewels. Those that, you know, they went out and they fed the poor. Jesus says, whatever you do unto the least of these, you do unto me. And uh, fortunately, there are so pe there are people out there that, uh, you know, they, they don't even want to help the least of these. And, and they're believers. And uh, yeah, they're probably saved. But their works may be consumed. And again, there are those people out there, other believers, that they don't share anything and they go out and they help the poor and they just do things from their heart. And, uh, and their works are like gold and silver. And they will withstand the fire. And those are the rewards that uh, Jesus will give them. It'll be amazing. So like I believe, I, I truly believe that when a believer comes to Jesus, God gives you a bank account. It's already set up in heaven. It's ready to go. And we are to store our treasures up in heaven. And uh, I believe, well actually I yeah, I, th I think I'm going to share that message with you guys later. The Lord gave me that word for our Bible study the other night, night, and it went very well. It was a good word from God. And a good reminder for us that um, our treasures are not here on earth. We do not store treasure here on earth, but in heaven, where it's eternal. All right, well, God bless you guys, and we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow for Romans 15. We're almost done it. See you later. Bye.